Number 9. The Lado Icon What would you do if you found a giant dinosaur skeleton of a shark that made the Great White look like a sardine? This here is your specimen. Following the world's worst ever mass extinction, known as the End Permian Event, during the Middle Triassic Epoch around 245 million years ago, large land-dwelling reptiles began migrating to the sea and adapting to the aquatic life, marking the start of a time period that was rife with large apex marine predators. Included among them was a bus-sized marine reptile and ichthyosaur called Thalatoarchon serophagus. Based on a fossilised specimen discovered in Nevada in 1998 and officially described in 2013, the species was at least 28 feet, almost 9 metres long according to National Geographic. Unlike most ichthyosaurs who had simple cone-shaped teeth, the Latoacon was equipped with double-edged blade-like chompers, with its biggest teeth measuring 4 inches or 10 centimetres long. The creature's large head, which had huge eyes to go along with it, was roughly twice the size in ratio to its body compared to other ichthyosaurs. These characteristics likely made Thalatoacon an apex predator among ichthyosaurs, with scientists theorising that it was the first ocean carnivore that evolved to feed on prey its own size. Its adaptability also suggests that marine ecosystems bounced back impressively fast after that massive extinction event, at least compared to the creatures on land. Number 8. Giganotosaurus Do you ever wonder if there were any apex predators bigger than the infamous T-Rex? Here's one for you, the Giganotosaurus. Heard it straight from the man who discovered it. Known only from fragmentary remains, the Giganotosaurus genus consisted of at least one known species, the Giganotosaurus carolini, the largest meat-eating theropod dinosaur of the late Cretaceous period. That's right, it was the king in its own habitat. Discovered in 1993 and first described in a study two years later, these colossal creatures roamed modern-day Argentina between 98 and 97 million years ago. Measuring between 40 and 43 feet or between 12 and 13 metres long from head to tail, with its head alone measuring 5.2 feet or 1.6 metres long, Giganotosaurus slightly outranks the Tyrannosaurus rex among the biggest carnivorous dinosaurs. Scientists initially estimated the species' weight at 6.6 .6 to 8.8 .8 tonnes. More recent research suggests the Giganotosaurus was even larger, tipping the scale at up to 15 tonnes. With two large, strong legs that it walked upright on and a thin, pointed tail, Giganotosaurus was both strong and agile and was capable of maintaining good balance and making quick turns while running, according to live science. In addition to being larger than T-Rex, a 2001 study claims that it could also run faster, clocking in at up to 31 miles or 50 kilometres an hour. Giganotosaurus likely had two three-fingered hands equipped with sharp claws. It's fairly safe to say then that Giganotosaurus lacked natural predators and fed on herbivorous dinosaurs. Number 7. Liopleurodon Consisting of two known species, the extinct Liopleurodon genus of marine reptiles included some of the mightiest marine creatures of all time. These apex predators lived in a shallow body of water in what is now France, starting around 165 million years ago during the late Jurassic period. Imagine finding one of these while you're out hunting for snails, or as they say in France, escargot. Like most pliosaurs, Liopleurodons had elongated heads, relatively short necks, thick dorsos and long flipper-like limbs. L. ferox, the larger of the Liopleurodon species, likely grew between 16 and 23 feet or 5 to 7 metres long and weighed up to 10 tonnes, although the largest known specimen was probably over 33 feet or 10 metres long. That's right, it would have turned you into a quick snack if you wound up in its waters. An ambush predator, the Liopleurodon, was a strong swimmer that was capable of quickly accelerating in pursuit of prey thanks to its four large flippers. Its forward-facing nostrils indicate that it had a superior sense of smell that came in handy for finding food. But this sea monster was not infallible despite its advantages, and the Liopleurodon and other pleosaurs ultimately lost their battle for survival against a newer, more adept and deadlier group of reptiles called the Mosasaurs by the start of the Cretaceous period around 150 million years ago. Number 6. Argentinosaurus Discovered in 1987 on a farm in southwestern Argentina where it lived during the late Cretaceous period, the Argentinosaurus genus of sauropods represent one of the largest known land animals of all time. 
It hails from the diverse titanosaur family, which consisted of humongous sauropods that existed on every known continent, and many of which thrived up until dinosaurs went extinct around 66 million years ago. Paleontologists can't seem to agree on exactly how big the creature was, with more generous estimates suggesting that Argentinosaurus was 100 to 130 feet or 30 to 40 meters long and weighed as much as 100 tons. Nobody knows for sure how large the dinosaur was because it's only known from fragmentary remains, leaving scientists tasked with making educated guesses based on more complete remains of smaller sauropods. Argentinosaurus grew slowly, taking up to 40 years to reach its maximum size. Based on what experts know about other titanosaurs, it probably laid between 10 and 15 eggs at a time, each measuring up to a foot or 30 centimetres in diameter. Given its size, Argentinosaurus was likely a slow mover, plodding along at a maximum of 5 miles or 8 kilometres an hour. This would have made the species vulnerable to the smaller but faster moving carnivores that it shared its territory with, like Giganotosaurus, which probably couldn't take it down one on one, but may have had the strength in numbers. And if they did kill one of these beasts, you can bet that their whole pack ate well for days. Argentinosaurus is just one candidate among several competitors for the title of largest land animal that ever lived, including Bruhathkaiosaurus, an extinct sauropod from India, Futalonchosaurus, a herbivorous late Cretaceous titanosaur that lived in modern day Argentina, and Dreadnoughtus, a supermassive sauropod that made breaking news after its discovery in 2014. Number 5. Basilosaurus It wasn't just dinosaurs that make normal people cower in fear. Early ancestors of modern whales were also totally terrifying. Found throughout the Tethys Ocean and other ancient water bodies, the extinct Basilosaurus whale genus lived between 41.3 and 33.9 million years ago in the late Eocene Epoch. These early marine mammals were members of a primitive group of cetaceans called Archaeocetae and were top predators in their environment. There are two known Basilosaurus species. Fossilised evidence of one, known as B. cetoides, was first discovered along the US Gulf Coast, with others being found throughout the eastern US. The other species, B. isis, has appeared in parts of North Africa, including Jordan, Egypt, Morocco and Tunisia, and possibly Antarctica. At up to 60 feet or 18 metres long, with a skull alone measuring as much as 3 feet or 1 metre, Basilosaurus may have been the largest creature of its time period. It had a bite force comparable to that of T-Rex. A study of the ancient whale's stomach contents revealed that it was indeed a formidable and fearsome force in its ecosystem, feasting on sharks and fish up to 20 inches or half a metre long. Bite marks on skull fossils belonging to smaller whales bear evidence that Basilosaurus also preyed upon other cetaceans. Basilosaurus likely went extinct around 34 million years ago during the Eocene Oligocene extinction event, which was small compared to some of history's other extinctions, but saw the eradication of this and many other marine creatures, including the remaining Archaeoceti species. Number 4. Chronosaurus These monstrosities inhabited the world's waters between 120 and 100 million years ago during the early Cretaceous period. Although scientists believe that the Chronosaurus may have had a worldwide present, the fossilised remains of only two species have ever been found. The first, K. Queenslandicus, was first discovered in northeastern Australia in 1899 and officially described in 1924. The other, K. Boyacinus, was discovered in Colombia over three quarters of a century later in 1977. Obviously, they're rare finds. At up to 36 feet or 9 metres long and weighing between 7 and 10 tonnes, these creatures rank among the largest known pleosaurs. Bite marks found in the skull of the Australian pleosaur Uromangosaurus shows that the fast-swimming chronosaurus preyed on marine reptiles, including fellow pleosaurs. But it did not fare any better than its relatives, who ultimately succumbed to better adapted, more vicious predators, including mosasaurs and sharks. Scientists believe it's possible for Chronosaurus fossils to turn up in places they haven't been found, including the western US which was covered in a shallow body of water during the early Cretaceous period, and where other pleosaurs have been discovered. So if you're out on a hike in Nevada, Utah or Arizona, you could stumble upon the remnants of the massive sea beast. Number 3. Lacalcan Aleocranianus Earlier this year, scientists in Argentine Patagonia unearthed the well-preserved skull of a new carnivorous dinosaur species that wreaked havoc on the region around 85 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous Epoch. 
Dubbed Lacalcan aleocranianus, it was one of several members of a group of meat-eating dinosaurs that dominated the South American landscape at the time, feasting on weaker prey. Measuring roughly 16 feet or 5 meters long and armed with huge claws and a 20-inch or 50-centimeter skull filled with sharp serrated teeth, L. aleocranianus was formidable in appearance even if it wasn't quite as large as some other carnivorous dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex and Giganotosaurus. It was also smaller than Phyvenata exoni, a fellow abelosaurid that was found just 2300 feet or 700 meters away in March 2018. Much like modern predators who coexist in the same habitat, they probably competed with one another for food and occasionally fought and killed each other. These recent discoveries are not only helpful for understanding how utterly frightening the prehistoric world was, but how diverse and abundant abelosaurids were throughout Patagonia and more locally during what scientists call the dinosaur's twilight period. How would you try to survive if you were alive during the terrifying world of the dinosaurs? It wouldn't be easy, but would you even try to find a way to avoid getting eaten? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below, then remember to subscribe to Epic Wildlife if you haven't already. Number 2. Mosasaurus The extinct Mosasaurus genus of marine reptiles ruled the waters of modern-day North America and Europe between 82 and 66 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. Their fossils often appear inland where bodies of water once existed amid higher sea levels, including the Great Interior Sea that covered a large portion of the American Midwest. Scientists believe that mosasaurs evolved from early Cretaceous terrestrial reptiles that resembled modern-day monitor lizards. An amphibious early version of the mosasaur, known as the Dallas lizard, Dallasaurus, and nicknamed the T-Rex of the ocean, had tiny feet and hands that enabled it to move both in water and on land and which eventually evolved into fin-like limbs better adapted to a marine environment. The largest mosasaur specimens measured up to 60 feet or 18 meters long and weighed as much as 15 tons, although scientists are unsure of its exact size range. Resembling a crocodile with fins, it was a top predator and one of the deadliest marine reptiles of its day. Mosasaurs had a ferocious set of teeth suited for shredding prey like fish, birds and other marine reptiles. A second set of teeth further inside the creature's mouth stopped prey from escaping during their terrifying final moments before being devoured. These fearsome sea monsters are blamed for eradicating at least two other reptile groups, including the ichthyosaurs and the pleosaurs, by outcompeting them for food. But much like the marine creatures they wiped out, mosasaurs were not invincible. If they hadn't gone extinct during the Cretaceous Paleogene event that wiped out the dinosaurs, it's entirely possible that they would have lost out to smarter, faster, and more vicious ancient sharks. Number 1. Titanoboa Between 60 and 58 million years ago, members of the extinct Titanoboa genus of unimaginably huge snakes lived in what is now northeastern Colombia. These utterly terrifying creatures came to dominate their tropical ecosystem just 6 million years after the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs during the Paleocene Epoch. At up to 45 feet or 13 meters long, roughly the length of a school bus, and weighing as much as 2,500 pounds, over 1,100 kilograms, that's the size of a small car, and with the highest part of its body measuring as high as a man's waist, Titanoboa ruled the jungle and ate pretty much anything it wanted, although it fed primarily on fish. The only known Titanoboa species is the largest snake ever discovered. It lived alongside other gargantuan prehistoric creatures, including crocodilians, turtles and fish that would be considered abnormally huge today in the now arid Serahon region that was once a lush tropical forest. At the time, the climate near the equator was much hotter and wetter than it is today, enabling cold-blooded creatures to grow much larger than they do now. Even today, the largest snakes and other reptiles live in tropical environments, while those further from the equator are smaller in size, according to Florida Museum vertebrate paleontologist Jonathan Bloch, who co-led the 2009 expedition that resulted in Titanopoa's discovery. Scientists are still trying to figure out exactly where the Titanoboa belongs on the evolutionary family tree. Number 10. New Mexican Triceratops New dinosaur species are always exciting, right? Check this one out. A new dinosaur has been found in Mexico and it looks an awful lot like a Triceratops. It's actually been identified as a new species of horned dinosaur, what's known as a Ceratopsid. It lived about 82 million years ago during the Cretaceous period, making it one of the oldest horned dinosaurs in the world. But it wasn't very big. 
the creature only grew to be a maximum of about 15 feet or 4.5 metres in length, though of course it was still significantly larger than most land animals today. If it were around now, it would terrify you if you encountered it. One thing that makes this new dinosaur, named Menephiceratops celii, so unique from others is that it had a distinct bone that formed a huge frill above its head, called a squamosal. It was less ornate than the frills on the other ceratopsids, but it was more concave, which is something scientists haven't seen much of before. This amazing dinosaur lived throughout North America, and like all its fellow dinosaurs, was wiped out with the great meteorite 66 million years before today. Number 9. Ancient Trilobite Researchers have discovered the fossil of a trilobite from 429 million years ago. And while trilobites themselves are nothing new, this fossil was something different. Scientists were able to see the internal structure of its eye. This is something that has never been done before. By studying the eye of the trilobite, scientists realised it's almost exactly the same as that of modern bees, crustaceans and dragonflies. Trilobites lived on Earth and were wiped out before the dinosaurs even came around. They were tiny arthropods with some tiny specimens only a millimetre in length that lived in the water and were related to modern insects and spiders. They were some of the earliest invertebrates of their kind. But what's amazing is that after finally seeing the eye structure of a trilobite, scientists learned that they had such efficient vision that over the next 429 million years, other arthropods didn't really need to adapt much. The internal eye structure of this family of animals has remained the same for half a billion years. It must be a pretty successful ocular design to last that long, don't you think? Number 8. Sea Dragon A British fossil hunter recently discovered a previously unidentified sea dragon on the English coast. Steve Etches found the immaculately preserved fossil of an ichthyosaur stuck in limestone at a place called the Jurassic Coast in Dorset. He handed the fossil over to scientists at the University of Portsmouth, who then spent a year working with it before they finally identified it as an entirely new species. According to their findings, the Ichthyosaurus lived around 150 million years ago. It's been named the Etches Sea Dragon after its discoverer. That's pretty cool, don't you think? Wouldn't you love to have a species named after you? What better way is there to be remembered for all time? Sounds pretty incredible to me. Experts say that in the United Kingdom alone, they have identified at least five different species of ichthyosaur to date from the late Jurassic period. The reason they're called sea dragons is because they have extremely large eyes and teeth. They were highly adapted underwater predators who glided through the water using their tail for propulsion instead of fins. They hunted fish and squid, with the largest of them being in North America. The largest ichthyosaur skull ever found was nearly 15 feet or 4.5 metres long. This newest ichthyosaur is the smallest ever discovered, making it more of a baby sea dragon. Number 7. Extinct Crocodile In the middle of the Australian outback, a new crocodile species has been discovered. Of course, this crocodile has been extinct for millions of years. Its skull was dated at being 8 million years old, though these ferocious creatures probably roamed the Australian continent as far back as 25 million years ago. What's truly fascinating is that according to Adam Yates, the senior curator of Earth Sciences at the Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory, this ancient crocodile is of absolutely no relation to modern crocodiles. Modern crocodiles only recently arrived in Australia and actually began life in Africa. They only immigrated to Australia a couple of million years ago. This new crocodile was very similar in size to the modern saltwater crocodile, but it may have been even stronger. The sheer size of its skull suggests a thickly muscled monster with deep jaws and especially massive teeth. It was probably a specialist in eating large flightless birds that used to live in Australia. To give you a good idea of just how strong the crocodile was, these birds that it preyed upon were about 9 feet or 3 metres tall and weighed upwards of 1,400 pounds, that's over 650 kilos. Unfortunately, the crocodile hasn't been given a name yet. It's expected to be unveiled as a new species in 2022. Number 6. Armoured Shark Sharks are scary, right? They glide through the water, ready to strike if they think you'd make a good meal. But one of their weaknesses is their soft bodies, as many people know. You can try to punch a shark in its face, and if you're in luck, you may be able to get it to go away. But what if the shark had armour? That would make it an even deadlier threat, right? Check this out. Yet another amazing new species has been found off the Jurassic coast of Dorset in England. This time, scientists discovered an armoured shark. 
The shark dates back 150 million years and has been classified as a very rare fossil. It belonged to an extinct group of animals known as hybodontiform, which were close prehistoric relatives to our modern sharks. The fossil was discovered stuck in a slab of rock and then taken to the Museum of Jurassic Marine Life. What makes this fossil so rare is that it's the only one of its kind ever to be found. No other specimens of this extinct shark have been uncovered by paleontologists. They don't actually know what the shark looked like or how it behaved, though they know it was definitely covered in something similar to armour plating. Picture a huge fish covered in armour scales with rows of shark teeth like a great white shark, but even more terrifying. Number 5. Ancient Camel Camels are already funny looking animals. But a fossilized ancient camel in Colorado? This one was surprising. In late 2020, the fossil of a very strange ancient camel was discovered during some construction work. The construction crew were working in the area around Brighton Boulevard in Denver when they found a large group of fossils spanning a time between 2.6 million and 11,700 years ago. The most fascinating fossil belonged to the ancient camel. But what did this prehistoric beast look like? It was quite similar to modern camels that you see today. However, the only thing researchers aren't sure about is whether it had a hump. It could have been a humpless camel. But what's really cool is just knowing that camels used to live all across North America. In fact, they lived alongside prehistoric horses and mastodons and even went extinct at around the same time as them about 10,000 years ago. They died as a result of human hunting and climate change. Ancient humans had absolutely no reservations about taking their spears and attacking these odd-looking animals, it seems. Number 4. Dinosaur Bird The very tiny fossil of a prehistoric baby bird recently discovered is helping experts to understand how exactly avian creatures came into existence. It's sort of cute, if you use your imagination and think about what it must have looked like when it was still alive. The fossil dates back to something during the Mesozoic era, which was between 250 and 65 million years ago. To date, it's the smallest avian fossil ever discovered from this era. It came from a group of extinct birds called Enantionithes and was smaller than your pinky finger. But here's what makes this fossil so important. The chick died almost immediately after it was born. This has enabled researchers to analyze the bird's bone structure in the middle of its development. Understanding how extinct animal bones developed can help scientists learn a lot about their lives. And according to Dr. Fabian Knoll from the University of Manchester, they can even learn about a certain animal's evolutionary traits. But this fossil was tricky because of its tiny size. The team had to use synchrotron radiation to observe the microstructures inside of the bones. They discovered that the bird's sternum was still made of cartilage and hadn't yet developed into solid bone, meaning it wouldn't have been able to fly. Now, that's something scientists kind of expected, but it was still a success to be able to actually prove it. After all, birds today typically can't fly immediately after birth. Scientists were able to determine that ancient avian species were just as varied as ours are today, even within the same family. Number 3. Ancient Mysterious Mammals The oldest mammal footprints ever found petrified on a beach date back 58 million years, but you'll never guess where the mammal footprints were found. They were discovered in Wyoming, stomped into the rocks seemingly in the middle of nowhere. Of course, millions of years ago, this would have been a beach, a place where mammals gathered during the Paleocene era. Wyoming was technically beachfront property back then, since the Gulf of Mexico covered a much larger area and a huge portion of both Montana and Wyoming were underwater. Wouldn't you have liked to live on a coastal property in southern Wyoming? Imagine that, it was probably a beautiful place to live, if not for all the giant animals wandering around. What's really fascinating is that paleontologists have been working to discover bones and fossils in the area for over 30 years, but had never bothered looking for footprints. It was a bit of a shock when they realised they had been walking over proof of extinct animals without even realising it. It wasn't until the sun hit the footprints at just the right angle that one of the researchers from the Texas A&M Natural Resources Institute spotted the tracks. Once he saw a few, it was easy to pick out the rest. After extensive research, we now know the tracks were left by at least two different animals. One of them was a large mammal about the size of a grizzly bear with five toes. The other animal had four toes. The five toed prints were probably made by some kind of Corypidon, which was like a semi-aquatic hippopotamus. The other prints were likely made by a type of hoofed animal, loosely related to deer and elk. 
However, the prints never matched anything from the fossil records, meaning they could both belong to new species previously undiscovered. There's just no way of knowing by only looking at the footprints. Number 2. Giant Burrowing Bat The fossilised remains of one of the scariest rodents ever has just been found by a team of scientists in New Zealand. This was a giant burrowing bat that lived in the country almost 19 million years ago. And if you thought modern bats were scary, this one is three times the size of most bats on Earth today, making it a literal nightmare creature. Burrowing bats are actually quite fascinating. They live only in New Zealand and are strange because they fly, scurry across the forest floor on their hands and feet like dogs and make their own burrows. They are quite fascinating. Even more amazing is that some of them are still alive today, although they are getting pushed towards extinction. Burrowing bats are related to vampire bats, frog-eating bats and even fishing bats, all of which belong to a bat superfamily that once dominated Australia, New Zealand and South America. That was 50 million years ago when all three pieces of land were still connected. And just like how the land masses were significantly different back then, so too were the bats. Number 1. Dinosaur Tail One of the coolest fossils ever was recently discovered in Mexico. The fossil is that of a dinosaur's tail almost perfectly preserved. It's an uncanny find that was made by a team of archaeologists working with the Natural Institute for Anthropology and History. The find was made in Coahuila and is the first of its kind in Mexico. It also might be the best preserved tail of any dinosaur in the world. The tail measures over 15 feet or 4.5 metres and was likely half the length of the dinosaur it was attached to. What dinosaur was that? Researchers say that it was probably the tail of a hadrosaurid, a type of duck-billed dinosaur that lived 72 million years ago. Other than the animal's tail, scientists also found its hips, though nobody's sure where the rest of its body went. Maybe it was eaten by a Tyrannosaurus rex. 9. Dogs maul woman to death One afternoon in November 2019 in Warren County, Ohio, police responded to a call about a possible drug overdose. When they arrived at the scene, they met Mary's husband, Dale, and his son in the driveway. The pair had returned home to the gruesome scene and Mary unresponsive. Mary's body bore obvious signs of severe injury, including cuts and puncture wounds. Police also found bloody towels and several changes of clothing, showing that Mary had repeatedly tried to clean herself up and get dressed. Dale told officers that one of Mary's two Great Danes, who were in an enclosed deck area, was vicious. He also said that because of her small size, Mary wouldn't have been able to fight the dog off if he attacked her. It appears as though the mortally wounded woman managed to get the canines outside, but didn't realise the severity of her injuries, possibly because she was on numerous prescriptions and was struggling with a drinking problem at the time. Mary's children did not buy the explanation that Mary was attacked by her dogs and bled to death and urged law enforcement to reopen the case, claiming they had telling evidence that there was more to their mother's death than investigators believed. A toxicology report showed that there was no alcohol in Mary's system when she died, contradicting her husband's claims that she was a daily drinker, but police maintained their position that Mary's dogs mauled her to death and that she had the time and opportunity to dial 911 but chose not to for reasons she ultimately took to the grave. 8. Killer Camel Pamela Weaver was an animal lover who raised goats, kangaroos, emus, rabbits and more at her Australian home. So it was no surprise when her husband Noel bought her a pet camel for her 60th birthday, even though most people might think of it as an unusual gift. She reportedly formed a strong bond with the camel but he developed a track record of erratic behaviour and a habit of trying to straddle other creatures at the farm. He eventually turned this tendency towards Mrs Weaver while she was in the middle of cooking dinner and drinking tea. Noel arrived at the residence to find his wife dead on the floor with hoof prints on her face and the camel running loose on the patio. Queensland detective Craig Gregory and camel expert Chris Hill concluded that the then 10-month-old pet killed Camilla when he tried to mount her knocking her over in the process and then stomping on her. Hill, who has over 20 years of experience working with camels, told the press that while the animals are typically non-aggressive, they can become dangerous when raised as pets. Pamela's family decided against euthanizing the camel and Noel publicly expressed his forgiveness for the creature at his wife's funeral. 7. 
Chimp vs. Human Sandra Herald raised her pet chimpanzee, Travis, like a member of the family in her Stamford, Connecticut home. The widow took baths, drank wine and shared a bed with her primate pal. Travis even brushed Sandra's hair and kissed her when she left the house. As strange as their closeness was, it seemed harmless enough. After all, Travis had no record of unruly behaviour except for one incident in 2003 when he escaped and held up traffic for hours. But nobody expected the tragedy that unfolded when Sandra's friend, 55-year-old Charla Nash, visited one day in 2009 and unintentionally somehow provoked the 14-year-old 200-pound or 91-kilo chimpanzee to fly into a rage. The unprovoked attack was gruesome. Travis latched onto Charla's face, ripping it apart. Sandra felt she had no other choice than to repeatedly stab her beloved animal companion in an attempt to save her friend. An ambulance was summoned to the scene and Charla was taken to the hospital in extremely critical condition. Travis attacked a police officer who shot the chimpanzee dead. Investigators were unsure what set Travis off, but as journalist Brian Walsh pointed out in a Time article, keeping a primate as a household pet is a ticking time bomb. Just like any other undomesticated species, chimpanzees are prone to act on instinct. Even after years of living alongside humans without incident, and they are an estimated five to seven times stronger than the average person. Simply put, this tragedy is a sobering reminder of why wild animals should always be considered dangerous and should only be handled by qualified professionals. 6. Baby Attacking Ferrets One day during the 2015 holiday season, Jessica Benales of Derby Borough, Pennsylvania left her one-month-old daughter, Skye, in a car seat on the floor of their home and ran upstairs to use the bathroom. In the short time she was gone, two of the family's three pet ferrets escaped their enclosure and attacked the baby girl, ripping off 25% of her face. Skye's father, Bernie Frame, awoke to the sound of his daughter screaming. He and Jessica rushed downstairs to find Skye with severe injuries to her lips, nose and other parts of her face. The baby was rushed to the hospital where she received life-saving surgery but would need many more reconstructive procedures in coming years. The ferrets were euthanized, but authorities largely blamed Skye's parents, who had five young children in their care at the time, claiming that the couple's home was deplorable and infested with insects. They charged the pair with child endangerment and barred them from having contact with their kids as the case worked its way through court. Benales and Frame maintained that they were good parents who had simply made a mistake, despite being under the supervision of three social services agencies and seven caseworkers when the mauling occurred. How do you feel about this situation? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. 5. Red Deer Seeks Revenge in 2010, deputies from the Harrison County Sheriff's Department in East Texas responded to an unusual call when a panicked resident summoned help for a 67-year-old member of their household whose pet deer had charged and trampled him. Officers found the man, Gerald Rushton, dead inside a pen where he illegally kept an exotic red stag deer. Rushton had entered the enclosure to feed the animal when the animal became aggressive and pinned its owner against a fence, then pierced him with its antlers, knocked him to the ground and stomped on him. Game wardens shot the 500-pound, 227-kilo stag before even going into the cage. They said they did not know why Rushton had kept a deer in a kennel on his property, but it wasn't his first brush in with the law over his keeping of exotic and wild pets. In 1994, Rushton was arrested for unlawfully keeping white-tailed deer in his yard. For whatever reason, he apparently couldn't resist the urge to risk his record and his life by doing it again. Although this was the first attack of its kind in the area, authorities used the tragedy as an opportunity to remind people of the dangers of trying to domesticate a wild animal. 4. Bear Turns on Owner Bears are adorable, but most people understand that it would be unrealistic and life-threatening to try keeping one as a pet. Even professional handlers are taking a chance by going near one. As the community of Ross Township, Pennsylvania learned in 2009 when a local resident with years of experience working with wildlife was mauled to death by a pet black bear. 
Kellyanne Walls had raised the nine-year-old 350-pound, 159-kilo bear named Teddy since cubhood and was cleaning his cage one day in 2009, as she had many times before. She threw a handful of dog food to the other side of Teddy's enclosure to distract him, but for unknown reasons, the bear turned on her and attacked her while her two young children helplessly looked on. Kelly's neighbor, Scott Castone, rushed over with his gun and opened fire on the bear, who was on top of the woman while his kids dialed 911. But by the time help arrived, it was too late to save Kelly's life. While Kelly and her husband were keeping the bear and other animals with a recently expired permit, they had a long-standing history of legitimate wildlife ownership and no previous issues with their pets becoming violent. Their property also had a track record of passing routine state inspections. It just goes to show that even when someone does things by the book and has the proper credentials, there's no way to truly eliminate the unpredictable element of a wild animal's behavior. Pennsylvania Game Commission employee Tim Conway told the press that Kelly made a fatal mistake by not keeping Teddy in a two-section cage that would enable her to isolate him while she cleaned it, a potentially life-saving measure that is customary among wild animal owners. 3. Suffocating Snake When an Irwin, Pennsylvania family's 10-foot-long or 3-meter, 70-pound, 32-kilo pet boa constrictor named Mo escaped his cage back in 2001, Eight-year-old Amber Mountain decided to try playing with the reptile. Soon enough, the little girl was on the kitchen floor with the snake coiled around her neck. She was rushed to the hospital in critical condition and died two days later. An autopsy unsurprisingly revealed that Amber succumbed to compression of the neck and chest. Amber's parents were accused of leaving her alone in a house full of dangerous snakes, including four pythons and the boa constrictor that killed her. Police charged the couple with manslaughter under the suspicion that recklessness and negligence caused their daughter's death. The girl's father, Robert Mountain, alleged that her mother, his estranged wife Marcy, had been out all night with her new boyfriend and still hadn't returned when he went to work the next day. Marcy, who pleaded guilty to child endangerment and received two years probation in exchange for testifying against Robert, claimed that he knew Moe's homemade cage was faulty and didn't do enough to prevent the boa constrictor from being able to escape. In fact, she had allegedly been telling her husband for quite some time that he needed to make the cage more secure. Moe had reportedly escaped numerous times, including hours before Robert left for work, so he taped it shut and put a board over it. In the end, the contentious couple's back-and-forth mudslinging did not put either of them in a better position than the other. Robert was found not guilty of manslaughter and walked away from the case with the same child endangerment conviction as Marcy. 2. Mountain Lion Mauling When animal control officers visited an Odessa, Texas home in mid-2011, they told the owner of a pet mountain lion that they needed to get a larger cage for the animal and that its current enclosure had unsafely large gaps in it. The woman failed to heed the authorities' instructions and months later, when a four-year-old family member approached the cage, the big cat reached its paws through an opening and mauled him. A neighbor overheard the commotion and called 911, and the little boy was hospitalized with lacerations and puncture wounds, including a bite mark to his face. Sadly, he died from his injuries. The Ector County Sheriff's Office initially told the press that the agency would defer to law enforcement in Odessa to press charges, but the incident happened outside the city's jurisdiction and animal control officers lacked the authority to do anything more than cite the mountain lion's owner, which they did, for failure to show proof of vaccinations. Sheriff Mark Donaldson later said that the department had not ruled out pursuing charges, but that an ongoing investigation had not yet found cause for an arrest. The legality of owning a mountain lion in Texas also became a source of confusion it was ultimately determined that owners must register their animal and follow strict rules and that the animal was unregistered. What ultimately became of the case is a mystery. 1. Tiger turns on the hand that feeds. Cynthia Lee Gamble had extensive experience handling exotic animals and was involved in wildlife-related filmmaking. Equipped with an exhibitor's license from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, she ran a for-profit breeding facility called the Center for Endangered Cats on her Pine County, Minnesota property for years with no reported incidents requiring police involvement. 
The Big Cat veteran's immaculate safety record changed in the worst imaginable way in April 2006. A friend went to visit Cynthia and found her dead inside an enclosure surrounding her tiger's individual cages. A drop door that normally kept the handler separate from the big cats had somehow been left open, enabling a 500-pound or 227-kilo Bengal tiger to escape. Cynthia was mauled to death in the first ever known incident of a tiger killing a human in the state of Minnesota. In the tragedy's aftermath, it came to light that she may not have been as safe about keeping animals as her reputation depicted. Neighbours had protested her plans to open the Centre for Endangered Cats in 1997, citing lowered property values and the endangerment of human lives. They accused Cynthia of keeping the cats in unsafe conditions and claimed that a tiger had bitten her colleague, causing injuries that required hospitalisation despite the absence of such incidents on her track record. The complaint also alleged that tigers had escaped their enclosures at the site. But Cynthia's colleagues and friends maintained that she operated her business carefully and that her death was nothing more than an unfortunate and unlikely tragedy. Minnesota has some of the nation's most lax exotic animal laws and the established history of maulings that one could expect to come with such laid-back policies. Thanks for watching. Which one of these animal attacks do you think was the most tragic? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. Catch you on the next video, and if you see one, maybe don't pet the tiger.